Hey guys, it's Miss Abby here with a December book talk. I'm going to be talking about a lot of books that came out this past year. We've had a really good year in publishing, so I'm excited to talk about some of these books. I have three fiction ones and three nonfiction ones. A lot of them are on year-end book lists, and some of them were even long-listed for the National Book Award. So let's get started. The first book we're going to talk about is called When You Trap a Tiger. This is by Tay Keller. Um, she also wrote this really great book, The Science of Breakable Things. This is the one that came out this year, um, and it's on a lot of year-end book lists. This book is about a girl named Lily, uh, her mom and her sister. They all move in with her grandmother. Um, her father had passed away. Uh, her grandmother is getting older, so her mom wants to move in with grandma so that they can kind of be with her as she's starting to get older. Um, Lily really loves her grandma's stories. Her grandma um, is Korean and she tells all these like really fun folk tales um, from her own uh, background, which is really awesome. So in this story, as Lily moves into her grandma's house, she's in the house and she starts seeing a tiger like she's worried am I hallucinating what's going on but she realizes um, that this tiger is trying to tell her something about her grandma her grandma has some secrets hidden away and um, Lily realizes that she needs to uncover those secrets in order to learn more about her grandma um, and kind of allow grandma to be to be free. So they, she realizes that her grandma stole something from the tiger and that's why the tiger is kind of haunting her house. It's a, it's a really good story. It's really cool because if you don't know a lot about Korean folklore then you can learn a lot more about it from this. You don't really have to know anything about it going into it but it might pique some interest for you to go and pick up some books um, from the library so that you can learn more about it as well. <sighs> that's When You Trap a Tiger. Our next book that I'm going to talk about is a little bit thicker. This one's called We Dream of Space by Erin Entrada Kelly. Now, Erin Entrada Kelly is a phenomenal writer, um, an award-winning writer, and the most recent book of hers that came out besides this one was Leilani of the Distant Sea, which was really, really, really interesting and intense. Um, this story is set in reality, <laughs> unlike her last one. This one is about three siblings. Um, and it takes place in the 1980s, right before the uh, Challenger explosion. If you don't know about the Challenger explosion, it was this truly, truly horrible day um, in American history where it was basically the opposite of the moon landing, where with the moon landing, everyone was so excited. With the Challenger disaster, um, people, including kids in school, were watching on TV as the Challenger launched and then it exploded. And um, really huge disaster and it's really interesting because the three characters in this book there's an older brother cash and then there's um, Fitch and Bird who are twins uh, it starts out cash they're all in middle school cash is repeating seventh grade um, which means that he's taking the same class he's in the same class as his younger siblings and he feels kind of eh about it he does not like that um, the the, the sister, Bird, is she wants to be an astronaut someday. So they're dealing with stuff at home. Um, their parents are fighting a lot and things like that. Uh, they're kind of dealing with their own issues because they've got this, you know, they're all in the same grade even though they shouldn't be and their brother's feeling kind of blah about it. Um, but when the Challenger explosion happens, um, it's really, really hard for Bird. She has spent a lot of time um, trying to get her family together, trying to make everything okay with her siblings. And so when that happens, um, she realizes that all of the care that she's been giving to other people, she really needs that. And so it's a, it's a really good story. Um, it's a true story. It happens day by day. And then the perspectives of the siblings, it's like, oh, here's day one. And then it's each sibling's um, different perspective of that. This one is really good realistic fiction. And um, it has some illustrations throughout it. So if you're into that kind of realistic um, I guess I would call it historical fiction at, the, at this point, then you could grab this one and check it out. And then you can grab some books about that Challenger disaster and read more about that if you're not familiar with it. That's We Dream of Space. Our next book that we're going to talk about is called Clean Getaway. This one is by Nick Stone. 
Um, she normally writes books um, that would be more considered YA, like young adult teen books. So this is actually her first, what's called middle grade book. Um, this story is about a boy named Scoob who's kind of always in trouble, in trouble at school, things aren't going well. Uh, his dad, who's his only parent, a single parent, is having, he's really, really strict. And so when Scoob's um, Jima, his grandma, shows up with a big trailer and asks him to just take off with her, he's like, yeah, count me in. So he goes with his grandma. Um, on this getaway. He doesn't know where they're going or what's going on, um, but he starts to get really suspicious when his Jima is dodging messages and calls from his dad, and uh, she has this weird like treasure box that she's never told anyone what's inside. Um, what's really interesting about this book, I really like the relationship that's between Scoob and Jima. And what's really, really cool is that it also includes this um, piece of American history in that what's inside Grandma's treasure box is the um, Traveler's Green Book, which was a book that African Americans used primarily in the South, but also in the North, that would tell them which hotels and restaurants and you know locations were friendly to Black Americans and which ones to avoid. Um, so that kind of plays in, I mean, it really plays into this story, but it's important to know that piece of history. And Nick Stone does an amazing job really explaining what that was and how it's important. And it really kind of um, plays a big part in the story, so I don't want to give too much of it away. But if you like reading kind of realistic stories, it's it's got really good dialogue in it. Um, this one would be a good one for you to check out. That's Clean Getaway. Now we're gonna jump into our nonfiction titles with Apple, Skin to the Core. This is by Eric Gains Gansworth, and I've talked about some of his books with you before. Um, and this one actually is a memoir, which means that it's his writing about himself, and it's written in verse, which is really unique. Um, so this one has, you know, full poetry, and it's his life story, but it's also the life story of his relatives. So um, Eric Gansworth is, I wanna get this right, he's an Onondaga tribal member, and he grew up on a Tuscarora reservation. And so he was kind of outside, an outsider, right? Um, but this story is unique in that it tells the history of his grandparents who all went to um, these boarding schools that really tried to um, beat native culture out of out of kids um, and it's kind of like the historical legacy of that um, the concept of it apples uh, is actually like a derogatory term for indigenous people who are uh, red on the outside white on the inside that's what the the phrase means and it's uh, don't don't use that phrase, obviously. <laughs> super, super bad. But um, Eric talks a lot about that, and it really um, talks about the complicated legacy of that, of being indigenous in America and what that means. And it's told through really beautiful poetry. Um, so if you like reading poetry, if you like reading about, you know, complicated parts of American history, which I think it's important we all talk about and know about, this would be a a good choice for you. And then that's Apple Skin to the Core. This next book is probably my favorite book that I read this year. Um, this one is The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh um, by Candace Fleming. This book is about the incredibly complicated person who Charles Lindbergh was. Um, I think a lot of people know Charles Lindbergh, Lucky Lindy, he flew across the Atlantic by himself, solo journey, big deal, was a huge celebrity. Um, and then the more complicated part, obviously, like when he got home, all of that celebrity came with some, some really, really terrible stuff. His um, baby was stolen uh, while he and his wife were having dinner and then later was, um, you know, murdered, which is, oh. So he had that horrible thing, um, but despite having this good thing, right, then it's like, oh my God, stuff is going south for Charles Lindbergh really fast. 
uh, you find out some really complicated stuff about him. He um, was a Nazi sympathizer. He really loved Hitler. And so when that all came to light, then people really started to back away from that positive feeling that they had towards him when um, he flew across the Atlantic. Um, he also had like three or four different families. I mean, he had a really bizarre life. And so in this book, you learn all the bad stuff and good stuff, and it makes him a little more of a, a real person instead of just like a hero, right? Everyone is complicated. And I think that's an important thing to know about historical figures. This one is a super compelling read. I read it in like two days, just read it straight. So if uh, American history interests you, I think this would be a good choice for you. And that's The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh. The last book that I'm going to talk about is called All 13. Um, this is by Christina Sunturnvat, and this is the true story of the cave rescue of the um, Thai boys soccer team. Um, if you remember this, it was from 2018. It was a big, big news story. There was a group of 13 boys from a soccer team who went to explore uh, some dry caves that then because of some rain that was not expected and different conditions uh, the caused the cave to be flooded and they were trapped inside and there was an international effort mounted to rescue these boys. Um, this is such a fast read. It has pictures, it has lots of information, and it actually has more it's a more complex story, I think, than what was initially reported in the news because you get to hear the perspective of all of those kids. You get to see all of the relief and um, rescue efforts that were going into place, but you also get to see some of the behind the scenes stuff that really didn't get reported on too much, like what was done locally. Um, there was sadly, uh, like all 13 of the boys were saved, their coach was saved, but there was um, one of the divers did lose his life trying to save them, which uh, super, super <laughs> heartbreaking and heroic. Um, but this book is really, really compelling. And I think the thing about it that I liked the most, especially after this difficult year that we've had, is that it made me feel really, really hopeful um, that people can work together to achieve some really good stuff. So if you want kind of a harrowing, but ultimately heartwarming, true story, um, All 13 would be the book for you. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this book chat. I hope that you found one of those interesting and that you will uh, put a hold on it and come grab it from us at the library and read it. You know, that's reading is one of the best releases and escapes that you can ever have. It's a skill that will follow you your whole life. And man, some of the most interesting people I talk to are some of the biggest readers I talk to. True story. So thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you next month. Bye guys.